Well, we didn't quite make the water plug, but I don't want to have to back up and start this whole mess over. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Mark, the president of Studio 346, and we're coming at you with our last devlog of 2023, if you're a patron, or our first one of 2024, if you're out on YouTube. Thanks, as always, to all of our lovely supporters over at Patreon. That's right, this is coming out a month early for all of you guys. And uh, yes, we realize that we're sneaking this in on the very last day of the year, uh, right at the end, but we had a ton of work to put this together. This is follow-up to our last devlog talking about customizations. This is customizations part two, and this time I'm once again joined by the wonderful Daniel Gallery. Hello. Hello, hello. So today we are talking about all things text, decals, and a little bit more on the customization front. So uh, how about we pop open our menu here? And uh, goodness, I really do love how this has turned out. The uh, the beautiful filigree that Wings and Strings has gone through to put all this together. We now have quite the wonderful menu to take care of all these things. So uh, I don't think we're gonna need the plow while we're sitting here anymore. So uh, I think I'm gonna get the plow off. Okay, let's see. So we want to go to details, details. and we want to go and take the plow off. Pilot, uh, we'll change the plow. Let's just go to a straight, uh, Lincoln pin, Baldwin pilot, and yes, you can see that there is no headlight, which looks a little it, silly. It doesn't fit with the uh, plow. It doesn't, Great. because the plow is huge. Yeah, I love that plow. <laughs> but yes, then a Baldwin headlight, and there we go. Uh, but that's not all that we can do, of course. We have many, many customization things. And we were talking about specifically text and decals. Well, let's uh, let's get a nice little decal going on here, shall we? So yeah, we'll go so back now to we've... style. Go to the headlight, make sure we just have the headlight selected, decal. Yep. And um, I like the boat. I'm going to put the boat on the side of this thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe make it just a tad smaller. Tad bit smaller. Let's see, maybe 100. These are uh, pixel sizes, I might add, that we're actually working out yeah. here. And this is one thing that we are working on. Some of the fun. So then go ahead and change the up, that. offset up a little bit. Let's see. We do want to streamline go. this UI for yeah. you guys before it gets to you. But for right now, it's very powerful and lets us do all sorts of fun things. So. Yeah, for 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 our end, we want to be able to do everything. The priority is, you know, having that set up. And then once we can do everything, we want to be able to make it as intuitive as possible. Right, because right uh, now we're physically moving the image uh, pixel by pixel and then offsetting it pixel by pixel, which is incredibly powerful, <laughs> but it's also a little bit confusing and, and needs a little bit more work to understand. Yeah. So we are going to be updating that in the future. It's on our list, but uh, that already looks pretty cool. I don't know, Daniel, right, uh, I am far from a Baldwin Styles expert. What should we do next? Uh, well, you've got this beautiful, beautiful headlight. I think we need some uh, striping to go with it. So go ahead and go up to your standard up at the top okay. here. No striping. Oh, yeah, we've got plenty of options. Most of them yeah. being the scary Baldwin styles that mean so nothing So you've to me. got all your Baldwin styles up at the top. You've also got a number of non-striping options. Uh, okay. Us being us, there's more than just one. Uh, <laughs> iron bands uh, goes to iron boiler bands. Right. Um, there's standards for Rio Grande Western with all the funky red. This is the Utah uh, Rio Grande Western, <laughs> yep. <laughs> for uh, SPC with black painted rods. Oh, weird. Um, I didn't yeah. notice that. that... I, I love those. Those are some of my favorites. That's very um, fun. And then uh, Silverton, Gladstone, and Northern and BC and F are the same on the engine side of things. Okay. Uh, the difference is the tender. So we'll see that a bit later. Okay. And then you've got the late, which is all black. Everything black all the time. Well, I mean, I do quite like that. But then we've got uh, the many styles as well. Yeah. So for your for your nice painted uh, uh, headlight, we might go with, how about a style 49 here? 49. Oh, yeah. That's your, your standard. Uh, and go ahead and get rid of the dome number. Yes, yeah, the, do the dome number does not uh, live we, with that. We so. are not automatically working with the size of the, the uh, number here yet. That right. will be a thing. Uh, awesome. We just need to do it. 
Um, so that is your standard second generation passenger style. Baldwin would have been using this from about 1878 to 1883. That's just and, beautiful. And uh, so it reset your headlight style. So let's go ahead. Which, uh, goodness, there's uh, so many different flavors. Let's go between... with headlight card 12. Headlight card here. 12. Yeah. Nice, nice understated uh, card 12 is what um, it's the the black and gold version of what Pennsylvania really like to use. Wow. Um, yeah. So that's a that's a good looking engine there. Let's uh, outfit the tender to suit. Let's do that. Uh, actually, before we outfit the tender, uh, maybe change, go to the uh, name lettering. The name lettering. Yes. And we'll change that to gold leaf. Uh, oh, yes. So cab side. Uh, and then yep. let's see, we're currently Rio Grande lightweight. You want to change it to a gold leaf color? Uh, yeah, so so that's going to be a lighter, paler color. Uh, okay, we have, we have all the options in the world. In a, bit, in a bit here. We could hex code, or we could just get silly. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you can do whatever whatever you want. Uh, we have, uh, we, that looks pretty good. That does look pretty good. We've tried to uh, be so, as, as clear as we can with everybody. We really want you to be able to make your railroad your railroad. Uh, yeah. And being able to get a little crazy with some of this stuff... Ton so of now, different fonts, ton of different options all the way around. Make it now, the way Mark. You want. You've got you've got this this beautiful light yellow color, but that's not gold leaves yet. So go ahead and set your metallic up. Oh yes, uh, to about 0. 0.95. 0. 0.95. and uh, set your roughness down as well. Maybe oh, yeah, about point oh five. Roughness was all the way up. So if we do that, oh now it's now it's shiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now we've got our our fully matching engine, right? And uh, and then we'll of course go over... uh, all of the details that we talked about in customization part one, all of the different they're things all they're all in here, of course. Uh, and we should note as well that we took your feedback in and <clears> the <throat> things that actually make a mechanical change for your operation of the locomotive yeah. are in one category, and then things that are just decorations, just for fun, just for personality, are down here. So you can change everything you want to up in this side uh, if you just want to change functional things and then everything else for pretty down here. But yeah, uh, let's get yeah. out the tender. Let's do it. Perfect. All right. So uh, switch over to the tender. Go back to style. styles. Yep. So for standard, we'll we'll match the standard. We'll go to, to style 49 here. All right. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. Um, and go ahead and change the lining to color. Oh, Yes, so you can have the straight yellow color. You could have nothing there, or you could have the gold. Yeah, none sense. in this case is showing up as as, as gold, gold, regardless, right? I think I think that's because you can't have a a card that's a color that'll that'll get streamlined in the final. Gotcha. Um, so you can choose either gold or color independently on the engine and tender That's and the awesome. reason is a lot of railroads would do the fancy gold on just the engine <laughs> and not on the tender the tenders are just tenders uh, man who cares yeah, yeah so accompanying let's go with a headlight card 11 headlight card 11 there we go yeah yeah we like to see that what do you want to show off next you want to mess around with the text some Let's see. Yeah, we, we, we didn't do much. We changed the, uh, obviously, for Blackjack's name, we changed it to a, a, a gold metallic, but we have so many so many more options yeah. here. Uh, let's see. Let's go for my railroad, the early version. Oh, oh, if I can spell. East Salida and Denver, the good old ES and D. Uh, yeah. And then we have just options. We can be crazy. That's a little too crazy, I think. I think we'll just yeah. go for something a bit more plain white. Uh, and then I can change then... the drop shadow as well. Yeah. That is just and, uh, too much fun. Remove the drop shadow as well. You it's removing true. the drop shadow is easy as setting zero depth. Yep. Uh and it will recenter because historically just a note here for the uh the historians in the crowd, if you're looking at a period photograph and you want to know whether your wine locomotive has a red drop shadow that will not show up in photographs at all. Check whether it's properly centered on the tender. If it's offset too high, ah, it's probably got a drop it's shadow. It's got a drop shadow because they centered it around the center of both rather than just specifically the one thing, right? 
Exactly. God, that that um, does that turns out so pretty. I mean, you can really add just a little hint of pizzazz just by getting into some of the crazier colors. I mean, goodness. I mean, Glenbrook that you work on has uh, either it's a green shadow or it's green it, lettering. It's I don't a, remember. It's a green shadow, but it's a bit deeper than that. Um, right. Just to just to show a little bit more power, go ahead and because we want all the te the text to match on this, right? Yeah. So go ahead and hit OK, and then select the rear and the rave as well. Okay. And then mess with your color some more. Oh, there we go. All right. Let's, uh, there we go. And then our drop shadow. And now everything on the tender now matches our yeah. rave and our rear, although we have a toolbox in the way on the rear. So let me get rid of that. Rear toolbox, kapow. Now it's gone. Now you can see the little rear engine number there for number 21 <laughs> yeah. yeah that's uh that's too much fun we got a lot of power and the customizations are not just for locomotives and tenders they're also for all of the rolling stock and uh, we've got some quite some fun up and around the bend that we'll have to show you in just a second yeah here. if i come over <clears throat> and pull up the menu for the tank car now now we can take a look at all of our options here on a piece of rolling stock yeah so we didn't get to this last time, so let's go in the details. Sure. Because this, this looks like a tank car, and you might be forgiven for thinking it's a tank car, but actually it's a flat car. Uh, go ahead and change the body type there to, uh, let's go with a four-stake flat. Four-stake. Ooh, okay. And Raised you can it see up. it's moved the uh, tank up. Right. Uh, because it's resting on the deck now, now instead of deck. resting on the sills. Right. Uh, and change your, your equipment. Right. Yep. So we so. have all kinds of fun options, and it's only it's only going to let you pick certain ones based on what you have chosen. Yeah. Right? Like, I can't it, pick a 12 stake because I only have a 4 stake you only option have eight. here. Right. Uh, so your stakes are for, for loads that might roll over the end. Your end stakes are for loads like cordwood. Right. Um log bunks all, all kinds of fun options here depending on yep. how you need to set it up and you'll be able to go to the car shop and modify all your cars like this you don't need to buy a dedicated flat car that is just always set up as a skeleton car or always set up as a framed car or anything like that you can go and refit your cars at any time yeah. for whatever purpose you actually need to use them for so now you've got the uh yeah. Wide bed. Wide bed. Yep. The, 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 the fact that we have different truss rod arrangements. <laughs> uh -huh. You really are a nerd, uh, Daniel. <laughs> well, in this, in this case, I repurposed that. Uh, that's your bolster. Oh, interesting. You can see it changing yeah, yeah. there at the bolster. Right. Um, since this car didn't have truss rod rearrangements, I just reused that that uh, slider. That but we'll see right. the truss rods on the box car. Awesome. Um, and, of course, you've got... Uh, actually, go to the couplers real quick. Go to the coupler. We've got, yep. we've got more than two coupler options now. Oh, goodness. All right. So right now we're we've Lincoln got pin. Your, your original Lincoln pin. This is what you'll recognize from everything else. You've got a Carter Brothers draw head. Right. And then you've got your tower automatic. Which, uh, I don't know. It, they're currently coupled right now, and I don't know what the code's going to do if I do that. It shouldn't. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. It just has to load the texture. There right. we go. So there you go. So the changing to auto couplers also adds all your U.S. safety appliances. Right, because they would come together lock, stock, and barrel of the day. So yeah, that's fun. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and set that back up with a tank, just so we can. Uh, sure. Let's see. So set the set the body back to a skeleton, so we can use our small tank here. Right there we go. So here you can see. Uh, there's not striping for a flat car. Right. Uh, it's just one color. And then all of these text fields. Gotcha. So we the, select the, all of these. We yeah. can go through and change options on change all the of the colors. Uh, the text. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the same is true of all the values here. If for some reason you want to reset multiple at once, okay. um, you can just type into the field and it'll set the, the value for all of those at the same time. That's super, super powerful. I mean, you can really change yeah. everything. And then... uh, the other thing you'll notice is that these cars have varying amounts of wear on them. 
Right. Um, yes. This car is seen a lot more service than the tank car. The yeah. tank car is relatively clean, but this one's actually starting to get a little grungy, a little dingy as it's been in service for a bit. As always, uh, yeah. maintenance so, mechanics are going to be an optional thing. You don't have to play with them if you don't want to, because managing a fleet can be quite a thing. And, and we'll get into the mechanics of how that works down the yeah. road, but uh, you will visually be able to see how the cars are doing and how much they've been used depending on how dirty they get. So you love to see that. <laughs> Clean your cars, folks. Yes. All right, let's 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 look at the... Uh, yeah, so we've got similar options. We've got um, the same three coupler options, truss rods. Uh, the, these box cars were built by Union Pacific, and they did a nifty thing where the truss rods went through the queen posts. And everyone uh, hated that. Everyone <laughs> hated that. So the options are as built or normal. Yes, so you could go through and actually have the truss rods down low. The, the whole purpose of a truss rod on a car is just like a truss rod on a guitar, where the car wants to sag due to gravity, and you can tighten this truss rod up, and it'll squeeze it back to the proper orientation here. So yeah, yeah. exactly, super fun. Uh, let's let's look over at the end of the car, and you can see these nice horizontal bars that are useful for, I guess, reaching around the side, but they didn't comply with the U.S. Safety Appliances Act, so okay. go ahead and uh, rebuild those end grabs. Yeah, if we go to the uh, automatic there. Uh, go And the uh, end grabs on the bottom. Oh, they're on the bottom as well, okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. There you go. Okay. So uh, Colorado's Southern solution to the U.S. Safety Appliances Act was just to make them diagonal. Okay. So that you still have a high up grab and a low down grab. <laughs> lazy. I've not lazy seen that railroad. very many other places, but it looks dope. It is pretty cool. That's a neat piece of history that we're going to be able to interpret with the game here. So. Uh, and then let's go back to the style, and we can look at what all paint options there are on any given car. Right. Um, this is a box car, so all of the paint options are what's available on everything. Right. So um, can go through and there's many 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 different color yeah. options. Yeah. Uh these first are all West Coast varieties, uh SP and CP and all those. The Tuscan is national. Right. Rollins is Union Pacific. Uh West Side Red is West Side. Prince's Mineral was everywhere. Right. Um that's what the Grand used. It's what I think the Lehigh Valley used Tuscan, Burlington used Princes, any number of things, right. and of course black. Uh, you can black have any was color rare. you want, so long as it's black, right? That's yeah, word. black black was rare as a freight car color until right. later, but it's always an option. And then um, there's options to have the same colors with or without the data on the car, so you can see the yeah. weights and other things. Super fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you can really customize these cars and locomotives and everything to really set it up and make it so that they work for your railroad the way that you need them to. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, let's head over to the caboose now. Uh, Dan, this is a combine. This is not a caboose. No, that's a caboose, Mark. It's a it's a combination car. It's got <laughs> it's got a so, baggage door. Uh, I so refuse another to believe this note. is a caboose. <laughs> <laughs> Another historical note for the people watching, uh, cabooses up until around 1900, the expectation was not necessarily that a caboose had a cupola. Uh, okay. Frequently, a caboose was just whatever car would fit. And so this was Carter Brothers' standard caboose. And no, it doesn't have a cupola. And yes, it carries passengers. <laughs> uh, it was not considered a passenger car in that it was not on a passenger train and it has bench seating. Interesting. Uh, which, which, despite despite being relatively common today, uh, was not considered suitable for normal passenger train use uh, back then. That's hilarious. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the details here, because these okay. cars got rebuilt quite a bit over their lives. Uh, couplers are all the same option. Right. Um, the truss rods here are the uh, steps. Oh, interesting. So you've got modern style passenger steps or a basic freight car stirrup. Oh, that, that looks cool. I like the way that the steps look. That's nice. I yeah. Um, 
there's three different areas into the interior. I'll advise you to get into the car before you look at those. Right. Okay. So, uh... So we have the as-built interior, then we have yeah. one with a bathroom. South Pacific Coast added a bathroom and pushed the stove up into the baggage section. Oh, interesting. And yeah. then uh, SP completely ripped out the bench seats, so... Oh, and totally changed it to be much more like a standard caboose. Okay. Yeah, if you if you happen to be at the Great Western Steam Up, uh, you'll recognize that I've conducted out of one of these cars. That's I awesome. love them. That's super um, cool. <laughs> and then uh, brakes. The caboose here does not have air brakes right now, so go ahead and set those up. Right. And they're listed under decorative at the moment. Um, That'll change. Obviously, that's going to change once we get there. We don't have train line air set up. Uh, set up on the engines, but uh, rolling stock, talking to rolling stock is something that's on our to-do list here. Uh, grabs. Those are your caboose grabs on the corners. Oh, there you go. I love the look of those. And then, of course, we have many 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 options as far as liveries <clears throat> many go. colors yeah so you'll see from the start um at, go ahead and go back up here okay there's a number of options that are the same right cp brown cp yellow vnt mineral right but right in the middle instead of a slate gray you have a pea green oh that's weird because cabooses wouldn't have been painted gray they would have oh, okay. been painted green with gray trucks and a gray roof that's so we did that that's fun uh okay and uh Princes then you keep black. going down Very SPC yellow. yellow is what the prototypes were delivered in oh and here's a uh, brilliant red of course. vibe yep <laughs> um and the 1916 mineral with the uh silver ends the canary CNC yellow, yellow with all the brown trim that's fun is beautiful that is awesome i love uh, the little lining on it too yes and then we yeah have 1880s and 1920s, 1920s. up yellow this is what the south park way cars would have gotten right uh denver Ludville and gunnison brown CNS early red. cns red uh cns later goes to prince's the broad top with the orange yeah there's that yeah. copper roof uh mineral roof mineral okay classic pullman green and uh then yeah and then DNR the GW, of gray. yeah so that's a good look at these couple cars here but we've got some more fun examples to show off now that you've yeah. seen what is possible uh and we're gonna go show those off because those are fun all right, Dan, why don't you talk to us a little bit about presets? <laughs> All right, so you look at this Superior Detritus boxcar, and you look at all of the text on it. Right. Now, uh, we've made this a little bit easier for you in that the ends of these are decals that will ship with the game. Right. Um, so those are as simple as putting it in there and checking it the same way we saw with the tank car. Right. Uh, you can do so many things with what we've done that we created a couple of presets uh, in order to show you a little bit more easily what is possible without, you know, putting you through half an hour of... Of going of, through uh, and, and doing all editing the details. Everything. Yes, precisely. So, and we are shipping the game with several sets of decals such as these, but you will have yes. your own private decals folder where you can add your own decals. If you want your friends to see them in multiplayer, though, you will have to share the images with them as well. Otherwise, it'll just be blank. But that's yeah. an easy way to decorate the cars however you like. Uh, and we'll, we'll walk down this whole string and show these yeah. off in just a second. <laughs> So, um, so this one was developed by Josh Bernard, uh, who's one of our art guys. He did most of the fonts in the game, I think, right now. Um, we've got a couple of guys who do fonts. Um, there's a lot of jokes on this car. That's yes. what uh, that's what fictional billboards are best for. Yes, um, for the amalgam concentrate, the frangible yeah. ceramics, cherished heirlooms, sand and gravel, both. Yes, yes, and you return it to anthrax quarries, of course. Yes, as you do. 
Um, <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this one, I had too much fun. I was given too much power is what I kept saying. Uh, this is the Southern Northern Pacific Atlantic Railroad Corporation Incorporated. Um, it's a subsidiary of the Pittsburgh, 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 and Pittsburgh. Yes, uh, and the yellow and then vibrant pink drop shadow, and they stole the door off the sister car because the door of the 12 broke, so they put the 13's door on it. It's fine. Yep. Uh, this one is very self-explanatory, and it is also noticeably the most ruined. Uh, I need to elaborate no further. Um, this one, showing off more decals, and uh, Rico fighting the good fight here. You know, uphill slow, downhill fast, tonnage first, and safety last, kids. There you go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You'd love to see it. So then here we've got a uh, slate gray box car, which looks almost green against the snow. It really does. Yeah. With the way that the light's set up for sure. Yeah. And it's uh, the and dangerous you'll, and you'll rapidly getting here, worse. <laughs> it's fine. The, the, the dangerous and rapidly getting worse text just goes completely over the door. They just said, okay, you know, what? we're just going to letter it. And then they hung the door and went, oh, well, we'll, uh, we'll just deal with it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh You've got Rochester Western, which is our uh, legally distinct uh, transcontinental railroad here. Definitely not one that uh, rhymes <laughs> with uh, Smother and Schmissnific, I think. It's fine. Yeah. It's uh -huh. fine. Um, Oahu Railway and Land Company. Yep. Very simple, but a fun decal. Yeah. Chilkoot Pass, which is another legally distinct, definitely, uh, definitely not in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Uh, this car came out so surprisingly well. It looks like the real car. This yes. is a car that's at the museum. <laughs> uh, one of the places where we we really wanted to value using uh, historic stuff where we can. The Florence and Cripple Creek equipment went everywhere. Right. And um, you know, a lot of it winds up in California, Nevada. Some of it winds up in Alaska. Uh, so we're shipping it with a Florence and Cripple Creek logo because... Because we can. It, it, well, and for everybody. Uh, <laughs> and everyone's railroad should honestly have a Florence and Cripple Creek boxcar on it. Yeah. They folded relatively nice early. So. Else. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the everyone's favorite Gramps tank car. Yep. Yep. Which also just very fun. And the history behind Gramps is hilarious. Um, the gentleman it's who great. owned the refinery in Alamosa was an older gentleman named, uh, you know, commonly called or referred to as Gramps. Uh, and his grandchildren wanted to know which uh, tank cars were his. And so he asked the railroad, hey, can I paint Gramps on the side of it? And they said, yeah, sure. And so any tank cars that serviced his refinery in Alamosa were painted Gramps. Uh, and yep. that's just that's just a little slice of the Colorado Railroad Museum right there. And I love that. Yeah. Um, this one's a, a little extra. The, the vibrant metallic blue. What, yeah, once again, I gave Mark too much power. You gave uh, me way too much power. It's it's not editable yet, but we wanted to be able to, to set the tank completely separately from the flat car it sits on. Right. So you can separately edit the color and metallicity of the tank independent of anything else. Right. It's great. Yeah, which is hilarious. And last but not least... We have the Emerald and Ponderosa car with a wonderful fictitious logo by Wings yeah. and Strings. Yeah, like the Rochester Western, we wanted to have some some thought out railroads that are already there. That if your deal is not designing your entire uh, railroad with a custom history and logos and everything like that, you can still join in the fun. Um, Right. So, in addition to our railroads owned by a man whose name rhyme, name rhymes with Bluntington, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes. you've got independent lines which are there for the sake of making the world feel more real. Right. Um, exactly. That's our goal with every step here. Right. Obviously, there's going to be some options that get into the ridiculous and the absurd, which people are going to have a lot of fun with. I can already smell. But you are also equipped to recreate whatever historically you want to here just by yeah. getting the image, uploading it into your own personal decal folder, and then going through with all of the options and the power of the editing machine. The important thing about this car to me is that it is the Emerald and Ponderosa. And Dan's laughing as I cannot speak. It's fine. 
Yep. The reason this car is important is that this, where we are right now, this is this the Ponderosa, is Ponderosa map. This is the first time you're seeing a devlog on a map that's going to ship with the game. This is actually one of the levels that's under development right now, uh, and it's a lot of fun. And so Wings and Strings has been working on putting that together. We have a fun little fictitious logo for a yep. railroad that may have run there, but uh, someday it'll be your railroad that runs there. And and importantly, we have a lot of Ponderosas, which... Uh... Yes, <laughs> which was quite the ordeal to actually... May yeah, happen. You, you may you may look at all of us and all of the detail we're putting into our railroads and go, "Wow, these are a bunch of foamers." We're just nerds. They just started arguing about the type of pine cones that the trees were supposed to have and how to model <laughs> the type of pine cones. I not even kidding, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we we've, we've currently got ponderosas. We'll probably also ship with Jeffrey pines, uh, sugar pines. Other stuff that you'll recognize if you've been around the Central Sierra, which I have for all my life. Uh, that's part of why I was so nerdy about this. I don't usually buy stuff that markets around Donner Pass. I don't buy stuff that markets around being from here because they never do it right. And so and here we are. And if we wanted to have something that looks a lot like Lake Tahoe, it better be done right. <laughs> and here we are saying, fine, I'll do it myself. So, yeah. So, yes. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we hope you really liked a look at some of the more advanced customization options. And we hope you're as excited as we are for the ridiculous amount of possibilities and everything that can happen on any car in this game and the amount of customizations that you'll be able to make to really bring your favorite railroad to life or bring your imagination to life within Century Esteem. Yeah. So thanks so much for watching and we will catch you all later in the new year. Uh, worth noting also in the preparation for this, we have like, we test stuff by just putting this stuff together. And so we put together a whole bunch of other presets that aren't there yet. Uh, there is multiple um, Bluntington roads. <laughs> <laughs> so many things. We have, we've done so many things that we can't show them all off here. Before we get totally out here, let's um, let's do a quick couple things. Uh, we're cold right now. Put the plow now. back on. Oh, we, we should put the plow back on, but I want to change it to oil first. And you can oh, see yeah. this, the smoke immediately has gone black because I've just welded the firing <laughs> valve all the way on for the sake of having some fun to look at. It's fine. Well, and since you're, since you're oil burning, we, we got to get the, the stack, the stack well. out of here. Let's, uh, let's get the cap stack on there. Yeah. And then it takes a second and the material loads. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we've managed to put the 21 over the, uh, over the boat. That's fine. Yep. And we need our plow back. Da, 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 da. Pilot, DSP and P plow. Oh, it won't work because I didn't take the headlight Cause, off. Because you doesn't haven't fit. taken the headlight off. I gotta take the headlight off first. <laughs> headlight, none. Okay, and now, now we can put the plow on. Maybe. You keep trying to, to scroll down. Go. You can't scroll down. Right, there, there you we go. are. Okay, well, again, thanks so much for watching everybody. Train's got to make it into town now that it's taken on water. Uh, definitely perfectly spotted here, so. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, taking on water while you're plowing has to be a uh, challenge. Right. It's a whole thing. And it's going to go and work its way into town now, so. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We will catch you all next time. Close the door, I'm cold! The conductor on this train was in fact born in a barn. <laughs>